Hey everyone, this is Spidey Click. Uh, here to try and uh, create a new video. I've never done this before, so uh, just warning you, it may be uh, new and terrible and all this stuff, but uh, we're going to give this a try and just see if we can uh, maybe show you guys some stuff. So uh, what I'm going to do here today, um, I have a little bit of time off today. I am going to uh, try to try to build a uh, website using Python and Flask. Um, I also have a virtual um, a virtual private host that I'm paying for currently and I want to I want to get it up and running on that and I'll show you guys some of the tools that I'm using for that so first of all this is the website that um, kind of the tutorial that really got me started on this I knew that I wanted to get started um, with with flask and I knew I could do it with a virtual uh, private server but I didn't know how to make the two really talk together and uh, this tutorial has been really helpful for getting me this this is really what I followed my very first weekend and this got me going uh, with something just basic that was working um, one of the tools that I'm going to be working with of course I've got Python and Flask uh, as for editing this stuff I'm going to be using Atom uh, for my text editor here I I don't do um, I don't do development environments entirely they seem to be a little bit too much bulk for me right now um, and this is just crazy extendable anyway so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this program downloaded and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get this set up. Uh, just for the moment, this is what I'm working with. This is my domain name. Right now I've got this um, this beta.spideyclick.net. This is currently forwarding to um, my virtual private host, uh, my virtual private host's IP address. Um, and I can actually tell it which which website I want to load up or which project I want to load up. Right now I'm just sending it to a different port. So this 5001, um, this is my test project here. Um, so just to show you here, right now we don't have anything. Um, and I, I've already got kind of a, a demo that I had already set up. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the last deal. Um, yeah, we just run the program. And you can see we're running on port 5001. Minimize that, and we'll refresh this page. And if everything works, there we go. We've got a little hello there. So I will show you guys how I'm getting to this. Uh, this is just kind of to show you a little bit about um, what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I'll check back in a little bit here <laughs> once we've got this program downloaded and um, kind of give you guys a progress update in a little bit. I am just running this with uh, like the, the default, um, I don't know, Flask. Uh, built-in web server. I'm not doing anything fancy. Normally you would want to have this set up with um, Nginx, I think it's called, or, or any other web server that, that you prefer. You could use Apache too. I'm, I'm not going to cover that part, um, at least not right here right now. We've got ourselves just a little demo website. That's all I'm messing with. So one of the things you're going to want to do as soon as you get Atom, uh, if you want to make your life a little bit easier and you have a virtual private server like I do, uh, you may want to get the remote FTP um, package for Atom. Uh, this will allow you to actually open up the files uh, on your server uh, just like a project. Go ahead, uh, look for SFTP. I personally use this remote-FTP. Um, just go ahead and install that. It'll make your life a little bit easier. If you're wondering how I'm actually getting into my server on a Windows machine, uh, this is SSH. This is using a program called Putty. Um, this, is, this is basically the de facto standard for uh, using SSH um, on, on Windows. Okay, let's get started here. Um, what I'm going to do here, uh, let's just create a new project. Seems like everything starts with a new project. Okay, and uh, we're going to put this, uh, let me see here. I'm just going to put this under, I think I've got a projects folder. Yeah, and let's just call this. Uh, just a little backstory here, the, uh, the, the organization I'm doing this for is Thunder Road Ministries. Uh, so the uh, that's that's kind of what I'm going to put down here. That is the website I'm going to be designing. Uh, there, 
basically they're a nonprofit. They go and um, uh, do uh, kids support at um, uh, motorcycle events and things like that. Give kids something to do um, during some of the craziness. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can maybe check out their website um, or possibly see if uh, you know if if you see this late enough, maybe I will have totally redone the website by that time, and uh, that should give you a little bit of information. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be our project folder, Thunder Road Ministries. We're going to select that. And you can see here we now have a little folder here. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, uh, I, may just, I may just actually want to synchronize this folder with the folder I already have right up here. Uh, that could save a lot of steps. And then I'll show you kind of what I've already got up there. So uh, this is a good time. We're going to go to packages. Let's get that um, remote FTP um, package up here. Uh, we're going to need to open it. So we'll hit toggle. Um, and we're going to, I think we actually, no, maybe not. Let's edit configuration. No? Okay. There was there is an option for like generating an SFTP. There it is. Create SFTP con config file. Uh, so you can see here, it's pretty nifty. It's, it fills out a lot of the information for you. Uh, host. This is going to be our actual website name or our server IP address. Uh, which since I have DNS set up already, uh, we can just do beta dot spidey click dot net. Uh, port is going to be 22, which is uh, you know SSH. So that's good. Uh, username. Uh, now, if you've got the permission set up right, I'm sure you could do this just as a regular user. Just to be safe here, I'm actually going to log in as root. The password I will put in, but not when the screen is recording. I know what you're thinking. No, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, remote, we could also change. This is, where, um, this is where it's actually going to connect to. So let's actually let's do a PWD, which I think I've already done. Um, Actually, let's cdtrm because that's where the actual website is. And now we'll do a pwd, and this should print it out nice and simple. Okay, so now we can just add that to this with a little bit of craziness. Okay, and so what that should tell it is um, that should tell it that once we're connected, this is where we're going to actually go. This is the folder we're synchronizing to. Uh, the rest of these I usually just leave to the default, no big deal. We'll go ahead and save that. And um, I'm going to, again, I'm going to change that password afterwards here. And um, I'll, I'll show you guys here. We'll, um, we'll try to synchronize that and see if it starts downloading everything uh, like it should. Okay, uh, so I went ahead and put my password in. And then all I had to do uh, was hit the connect button that was just over here. Uh, that went ahead and... Uh, gave me this whole section right over here. So now we can see, um, I'm going to show you here if we click into init.py, I think I have to tell it to download. And let's actually, um, yeah, let's just download this thing right here. We'll see if this uh, pulls it all down over here. There it is. It's all popping into place. Okay, so we click into init.py and you can see um, this is our whole uh, our whole little demo here. Uh, so let me run you through real quick um, what I've done on the server side so far just to get to this hello there page because uh, this is actually a lot more difficult uh, than you might think um, you know just just getting it started um, so kind of going through this um, you definitely want to uh, install this epl, uh, EPEL release uh, you want to install uh, I'm using CentOS 7, by the way. That is entirely what I'm working with. Um, I did go ahead and install Python pip, Python, uh, Python devil, GCC, and, I, you know, of course, I did Nginx as well, or sorry, Nginx, I believe it's <laughs> pronounced, um, but uh, I, we're, we're not going to mess with that for the moment. Um, you do want to go ahead and also get virtual uh, env, env, um, and get that installed. Okay, so up to this point, we've essentially been getting Python working on our server um, and getting some of those add-ons installed. So let me show you one of the cool things with this virtual environment uh, program. Uh, so let's just create a, a, a sample project. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go a little bit back from all of this stuff over here. Let's just create 
a new folder and we'll create a new virtual environment. So you guys kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, so we're just going to make a directory uh, called test. You can call this anything you want. Uh, this is what the uh, this is what virtual environment is actually going to be running inside of. Okay, so we've got ourselves a test, and now what you can do, there's two different commands that you can run for this, and they differ between Python 2 and Python 3. Uh, so if you're wanting to do this with Python 2, all you really need to do is do virtual env and then test. And I'll show you here. It's going to install setup tools, pip, wheel, all this cool stuff that will allow you uh, to... Um, basically build your program in an isolated environment like I said so you don't screw up the servers installation of Python if you do something weird uh, so let's go into uh, into test here and um, here's what you want to do after that if you actually want to activate uh, this virtual environment you have to type in you have to do source uh, and we're going to go to bin and then I think it's just activate You'll see here, we get this little test in parentheses up here. So that's telling us we're actually inside of the virtual environment. Uh, so now we can, we can do all of our uh, pip install commands, um, and it'll install it in the virtual environment and not on the server itself. Again, that's important uh, just to keep things isolated. Uh, so let's try this. pip install, um, not virtual environment, uh, flask. Here we go. And you'll see it's starting to download and it does all the craziness there. So that's that part done. Um, I think according to this, oh, we also want to have UWSGI. So this is the program that is uh, kind of our temporary, it, it communicates with the server. Um, this, whole, this whole deal was very confusing to me for <laughs> quite a while. Uh, pip install UWSGI. And we'll see, should download that one as well. Yeah, okay, that might take a little bit. Okay, um, and then once that's done, uh, that's essentially all you need just to get something basic up and running, okay? Uh, so we can actually just copy this into a, uh, like a test uh, project, uh, test project name. Uh, so let's uh, still need to wait for this to finish up. And just for the moment, um, I'm not gonna mess with this guy will we'll switch to this folder in a little bit but I want to just finish showing you guys what the test looks like uh, so we're, we're gonna LS okay what you want to do uh, I'm gonna use nano for this uh, just to temporarily create a text file uh, let's nano uh, test.py and this is what's actually going to give us our our website when we <laughs> when we go to beta.spideyclick.net um, uh, here we go uh, pasting all this stuff in. So we're importing Flask, our application um, equals Flask here, application route. So this slash means as soon as it goes to this website, it doesn't have to go to like slash uh, intro or slash splash. That's actually what you would uh, type into the browser. So if we wanted to go to slash splash, we would actually have to type in beta.spyclick.net slash splash colon 5001 uh, but we're not going to mess with that <clears throat> I'm going to leave it at the slash and then uh, define hello uh, we could really change this to anything we want let's try uh, let's do green for example I like green um, if name equals main if you haven't seen this before this is just Python's way of saying um, hey if, if you're the person running this program um, if I'm not being called as part of an extension or something like that um, then application dot run host 0, .0, 0, 0, 0. So this is running it off of this computer. Uh, now one tricky little part that I'm going to add on to here because I have more than one website running off of this server already I'm also going to add another line here maybe do a column I'm gonna say port uh, equals let's do 5002 okay I don't think I've used that one we'll save that okay cancel out of that and then um, just to double check I do have two versions of Python on here yeah I did install with Python 2 that's good <laughs> so uh, now let's just do Python um, test.py and I think okay so we see we're running on port 5002 so now if we switch this to port 5002 this little hello there should turn green because that's what we put in let's give it a shot there we go 
Okay, so uh, that's just an example of setting up a new environment, um, how to just get it basically up and running. Um, now I will show you one last thing here in a second um, as far as getting it set up with Python 3. So one last little bit here, uh, if you're like me and you like to run Python 3 for your applications, uh, you do need to do a little bit of a different command here. Uh, what you need to do is you need to do Python 3. I, I compiled Python 3 from source on this server a while back, um, so I, I'll just show you here. Pyth if I do uh, Python 3 dash, uh, what was that, v, yeah, we can see I've got Python 3.6 um, installed on the server. Uh, so we can do Python 3 dash m, so that's for uh, module, and then I'm actually referring to this little guy right here, because this, this has been, uh, this got me for a little bit. Uh, so v, e, n, v. Uh, it's a little bit different from what I usually do, but that's okay. And we're just going to put in test. I cleared out the test directory and then added it back in. I, I don't think I showed you that. And this should do essentially the same thing. Now if we go into test, we should still be able to do source uh, bin slash act, oop, activate. Okay, and yeah, you can see we're in test. So now we could, if we wanted, we could do all of our pip installs. One of the nice things that that does is uh, that once you've got the Python 3 set as, uh, as a virtual environment, that actually becomes the default for just the word Python within that virtual environment. So you can see if we do a Python dash V in the, per in the virtual environment, it shows us Python 3.6.0. Um, now, just to kind of contrast, this is still not going to mess with your server at all because your server's default Python is still 2.7 point uh, whatever. I'll show you here if we deactivate, um, there we go, oops, deactivate, there we go. Um, and then if I do the same exact command, we're going to get Python 2.7.5. Uh, so you can see that that does keep things isolated. Okay, I think that's where I'm going to cut it for this video. Um, we've, we've gotten as far as creating a little hello there page. We've got a virtual environment running. Um, and, and essentially on the tutorial, we've gotten up to this up to this point right there with the hello there. So uh, like I said, we've got uh, virtual environment running, we've got a page, uh, just a basic page up there. Um, and in the next section, we're gonna start looking at um, setting up something a little bit more elaborate than just a hello there page. Uh, so come back for that and we'll see you then.